Hi everyone, welcome to Bumblebee Crafts. Thanks for tuning in to my collaboration video for the hashtag Hearty Creations 2024. Super excited to be a part of another collaboration that uh, Rach and Bella Crafts have hosted. Uh, this time round we've got guest designers Edith from Scrapbooking With Me and Melina as well um, has contributed to the um, kits. There's um, a full lineup. I think there's about 30 yes 30 channels and it runs from the 1st um, of June until the 15th of June um, so I'm today on the 3rd of June so do check out um, Rachel's and Edith's um, preview videos and everything all the links and everything will be down below um, and please do go and check out everybody else's that follows after me um, they've got some fantastic um, creators um, lined up again this time round so with um, this time round Rachel um, gave us the choice of, of a prompt um, she put a list of prompts together um, and being a part of her design team, I'd already got a sneak peek at um, some of her um, pages in the kit and I'd noticed that she's got um, one here um, that had stitching and sewing and then this lovely um, mannequin there and then I seal the prompt stitch and it's like I have to do that, I just have to do that one. If any of my regular subbies are watching this they will know that I love fabric sewing I used to um, do dressmaking um, back in my college days. I studied it at, at college. Um, so anything to do with sewing and dressmaking and then the prompt stitch just went hand in hand. So this video is going to be a collection of slightly shorter videos um, that I'm going to be doing over the time um, and then just I'm just going to condense them all down to one video because I've got lots of ideas of how to incorporate stitches in our journals. The kits that Rachel's designed are more of a writing journal. There's a lot more blank pages. They're set out that um, you've got some writing and stuff on them. I have got, um, have I got them here. Yeah, right. This is Rachel's kit. Um, but you've got pages um, like this that are set out. So you've got lots of writing areas and things like that. So um, I thought, well, my prompt being stitch, I've got different ways that we can incorporate stitching into our journal. First things first, I've gone ahead and collaged my journal cover. Now I've used the gorgeous pages um, from Edith's kit, um, both inside and on the outside. And then I've used my oxide bundled sage and just given it a bit of an edge around it. Um, and that it blends so well the oxide so that's my cover it's nowhere near finished but I've got the prep work done and my idea was I saw this page um, in Rachel's kit and that I thought absolutely perfect that would look lovely on the front of my journal there um, but I want to create texture layer and obviously use my prompt stitching so any of you that have watched my mixed media ones, um, I was actually sewing um, onto the card and I want to do that again with this one. Um, I just think because it's an embroidery hoop and I just think I can do a few little embroidery pieces on there and then that can be stuck down on here. Then I've gone ahead and I printed it at, off um, a couple of times so that I could cut the two pieces out. I've got cut out the mannequin. On here and my idea is I want to put on here I want to actually put the fabric on it um, and glue it down so that this forms the front of my journal so that you've then got this and I'm hoping to be able to have some of this material hanging down um, and then as the mannequins got the digital has got the tie around it I've got a few little trims um, so they're my ideas that I want to do and I've also got these cut out from the two pages of um, Rachel's kit because I want to do some um, like little French knots and some little stitches on there. 
and then these two I cut them out from the Rachel's page and I want to put just some um, rows of string on here as if just on an odd few of them so you've got some lovely texture elements to them so hopefully we will get all of these done um, in the video so I'm going to start by um, doing some stitching on here and I think first things first I'm going to start with some of the leaves because they're just going to be straightforward um, straight stitches that I'm going to do. I'm not doing any fancy embroidery stitches or anything here. I'm just keeping it nice and simple. So yeah, I'm just checking I'm in camera. So I've got my stitching needle and this is um, six stranded cotton. It's a vintage one. I'm not sure where I got it from. But I'm just going to excuse me, bring the needle up to my eye so I can see. <laughs> there we go. Now I want a piece of masking tape to hold it. So where do we want to start? I think we're going to start here. And I'm just going to come up here. And then all I'm going to do is use my masking tape so that that way there's no knots behind it. And it will lay really nice and flat that all down like so okay so what I'm gonna do is come up and do the leaf I'm gonna do a stitch like that then I'm gonna come back up that hole and it's just kind of using um, your intuition and seeing what you think would look nice with the stitches on here I'm just going to do a few little stitches here and I think I'm going to do another one to the side here. I hope you can't hear that. It sounds like no idea what the neighbour's doing. Um, he's been grinding and using a, sounds like an angle grinder, um, sawing um, what sounded like wood and planing it and yeah doing some kind of construction work next door <laughs> so hopefully it's not too loud so yeah that's there looking really really nice so I'm just going to carry on up here now when I was doing um, my mixed media which is where I got this idea I mean it's not a new idea it's been done lots of times before but um, I hadn't done it for um, a long time and I certainly hadn't done it on camera for you guys to see um, I never actually got to sew the pages um, or show you the pages that I wanted to sew on camera. So that's what I thought I would do a little bit more um, stitching today in this video. Doesn't that look so lovely? And then I just want to do a little one at the top here with this leaf. There. Okay, so what else do I want to do? I do think I might do some on this one here. I might do a chain stitch, um, not a chain stitch, um, back stitch on this bit. Because then that will be like it's forming part of the stem. I don't know if I've got, let's have a look, do I have anything dark? I think my, yeah, the dark green is just, it's not the right colour green for this. I don't know, actually. I say that because it looks so bright in the thing, but it might be quite nice just to do. Yeah, 
I'm going to do one more up just slightly above it here, I think. Yeah, okay, so that's that. Then I think I'll come across um, from here as well and do the same with this one and do the slightly darker. Green. Yeah, I, I see this since like I just can't, couldn't resist doing it. I had to, had to stitch onto the uh, card again. Well, I've printed it on card. Um, it's just um, a standard. Um, I think it's 160 GSM presentation card so it prints really nicely okay so that's that one and then we'll do one more down here I should have enough thread this is looking really really nice so you can do this with anything any pattern that you see on here if you want um, you can just add some stitching it really is a lovely way to um, add texture and you don't have to be confident at stitching at all there there we go just thinking do I want anything more Can always come back and then all I'm going to do is just put the thread under there with another another bit of this to hold it down before snipping it off there we go oh, look at that yeah, can you guys see that that's lovely okay so let's um, go with some of the darker green. Where's my end? Now these are quite thicker. It's six stranded, but it's definitely fluffier. So I think I'm going to split it. Oh, it's knotted itself. I always get it knotted up. If you watched any previous videos, I'm always doing it. Right, let me just, I'm probably off camera doing this, but I'm just attempting to try and separate the two threads. Who knew separating threads was so difficult? <laughs> There's got to be a, um, a trick to doing it. Can go back in there. Just excuse me off camera while I thread my needle. Okay, so I want to do a A stitch along here so that it um, creates a stem. I'm just going to flatten that down. Uh, just do a little stem here. I'm going to come back. No, nope, I've come up the wrong one. Back into this hole. 
coming across to this one back into that middle hole again and then I'm going to jump up actually yeah I am going to jump up to that one Then I'm going to jump up to this one and bring it down to this one and hopefully we can sit that between those two. Yes, we can. There we go. That's nice. That sits in there. Okay. So that's created just a little bit of a stem for that. Now what I want to do with this one is just create some little leaves off of it. therapeutic doing this so I do apologize if I'm quite quiet I do find it very medita meditative <laughs> okay I'm gonna want some little leaves off the side here top going to put I'm just adding in a couple at the top there's nothing printed in the digital but I just want to finish this little bit off with a couple of little stitches to make it look like there's a leaf at the top okay oh, that's looking really really nice okay Let's come along to do this one. How are we doing for time? 17 minutes. Actually, that's not too bad at all. So what I'll do is I'll sh we'll do the um, flowers and the French knots, but um, the other one that, um, where is it? Is it that one? Yeah, that one. Um, I will probably um, f do that and film it as a little short um, because it's going to be exactly the same as what I'm doing here, that kind of style. So... Um, once I've done these and then I'll show you what I plan to do for the um, threads, the actual um, spools, I'll uh, do that one off camera for you. And then I'm going to decide which I'm going to put on the front. I am leaning more towards having this on the um, front cover. But I'm not I'm not 100% yet decided. I just wanted to come on and do some now um, and get prepped for my video um, for this video, and then obviously I want to um, do some pages and how I like to um, stitch on the pages. Oh, 
Okay, so that's that bit. And then I'm going to go with this one here and we will finish off with some little leaves on here. And again, I'm going to come in at the top and just add a little flourish to the top. There isn't one here, but I'm just going to add a little one. Like so. There we go. Okay, so let's tie this one off. Come back under here. Get a masking tape. Okay. Lovely. So that's our leaves done. What I want to do now is the flowers. And again, what I think I'm going to do is split this. So I'm just doing this off camera so that I can, you don't have to see how how much I'm struggling to do it. <laughs> oh, that's terrible trying to do this. And I've gone and got myself in a knot as well. That's good. I don't quite know how I managed that. Nearly there, nearly there. I'm just going to cut that. There we go. And three, and there's three in there. There we go. Sort that out later. Okay, let's just thread it. Okay, so I'm looking at these and because they're roses, they've got such lovely sweeping lines. So what I'm going to do, I think, is come right up in the centre and do a French knot in the centre of this. Because then that way, um, that's the nice little tight ball that you get in the front, in the middle of the rose. And then I want to try and emulate the rose by... Um, going round in little circles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm just gonna carry it slightly to the side, pull that, and come down. And that is my little French knot as my centre of the rose. Okay, so what I'm going to do is come back up that hole. And then it's just a case, like I said, using your intuition and just doing yourself some little lines going round. I think I might do another little French knot. I think just just a, a two 
uh, three one actually and then I'm going to come back down this hole because I do like how the French knots look they give such great texture I'm going to the dress. I'm going to do another little French knot here. And come down here. So I'm not doing any particular style pattern. I am literally just making it up as I go. I'm just adding what I think look looks nice. I've gone quiet again, I'm now concentrating on doing these French knots. Okay. Let's come up here. Yeah. And across to here. But before I pull it tight, I'm going to come out a bit here so that that kind of holds it out. I'm just going to lift that, oops, this one, trying to get the right hole. Oops, sorry, I caught you there with my uh, head. There, that's held that out where I wanted it to be, be. that's good. And I'll do the same with this one. There. So what do I want to do? I want to come down here. I can find the hole. Where is it there? That one. across to there and then where do I think I think I'm going to come up here I can find that hole 
that's it and do another little French knot over here okay there so that's just a little stitching there I'm going to carry on doing this um, but I'm going to do that off camera I think you get the idea of what I'm doing here so I will pause the video here and I will be back hello again I'm back so I've finished this let's hold it up to the camera decided to put a little bit of um, darker pink in the roses just to create some shadows done a different kind of flower there and then I've done just some little French knots and some dots and I just think that on the front of the journal cover is just going to look gorgeous so uh, yeah that's that bit done um, what I want to do now is focus on doing the mannequin, um, creating the mannequin. So although I will be gluing um, the fabric behind, I do want to add some stitching to it, obviously, um, keeping in with my prompt. Um, first thing I've done is I've just traced around that um, the cutout mannequin um, because like I did with this one I've backed it so all the stitches are nicely sealed inside um, and you haven't got to worry about them and I thought if I do this first time you get material over and then stick it on I might run the risk of cutting that so that's what I've done first if you do want to follow along okay so what I want to do first is create this little bodice piece and I think we can just yeah we don't need too much of that so let's cut a piece of this and then what I'm going to do I think is just glue one at side at a time just put a bit of glue down here if I hold that there let's get my glue we will, as I said, we will be doing some stitching, but uh, I just want to put some glue behind it to start with to hold it. So I'm using my good old Fabri-Tac glue for this. I'm just going to put a bead of glue there so that I can just hold that down like so. There. grab my tissue and clean me glue it's me all goobered up there we go that's better so once that's done I'm just going to move that round to where I want it and I'm going to do the same again with some glue this side get my fabric up glue So that we can then manipulate that round to where we want it and we can hold that down and that is just wrapped around nicely on there now let's glue the excess down here it's flapping a little there we go oh doesn't that look lovely doesn't that look so so lovely so I'm going to let that dry for a moment because what I want to do is just do some stitching along that top bit. Um, okay, I need another tissue to wipe my glue. Sorry, I'm slightly distracted because the cat's come in here and she looks like she's going a bit crazy. That's um, If you follow my channel, um, that's the cat that's... Uh, started to get a bit of arthritis and she's hurt her paw um, and she's now a week it was last Thursday I noticed it um, see how she went for the day took her to the vets on the Friday um, so it's been over over a week now 
um, and she is much much better she still does limp if she um, doesn't wait for us to pull her um, to help her down from things but she is definitely better than she was okay so this is just some straightforward sewing cotton and a nice little thin needle and I'm just going to come in from the back and I'm just going to do a little stitch all along here so I'm just going to hold it up to my to see because it's very small and fiddly just hold that in I will show you on um, hold it up to the camera once I've done it going to do quite small neat little stitches so you could do this with lace all sorts of um, material I've covered the mannequins completely um, with material before but they've been like plain mannequins that haven't had a dress on them and I've just done them as if they've been covered you know you can get these really nice like Kath Kidson um, material covered mannequins um, I've done that to some card ones before um, but I've not actually turned it into a little dress so I'm really excited to do this one I think it's going to look really nice it might Oh, it wants to keep going there. I want it up there. There we go. Last little stitch. There we go. So I'm just going to run that through. Like that. I'm not going to knot it because I don't want... Um, a big knot under there but we've got our backing that's going to go on there so I'm just going to chop that off there okay so I don't know how, how you can see that I've just run a bead of stitching across the top there I don't know if it shows you can see the holes look as I've gone across there like that so that's all nice secure and I'm not worried too worried about that puffing at the moment um I think I'm going to need a bit of a longer thread for this next bit because I want to create the skirt and the skirt's going to be created out of this. So let's just grab myself a bit longer bit of this. Ah, she's settled down now, my little girl. My little fur baby. Sorry, I'm just going to thread my needle off camera slightly. There we go, very small fine needle, it's the only one I could find, I think the other one that I normally have up on my craft um, trolley here next to me is um, downstairs because I wanted to finish um, some of the flowers that I didn't get done in my Fabric Friday video, so that's downstairs. Right, okay, so what I want to do I think I'm just going to cut a rectangle off up here because that bit's annoying me. So I'm just going to cut up there on that bit. Now we don't want it too long either. So where are we? That's going to be about there. I'm going to going to chop it here we can always trim a little bit more afterwards now as it's already got a natural little fold in there I am going to tuck that over yeah okay so I've got my knot I'm going to come in from the back and then as this is nicely folded I'm just going to do a bit of a pinch what we call pinch press Lovely. And I'm just going to do a simple little running stitch. You won't actually see this like this because I actually want it to gather up. 
because obviously it's too wide um, for the waist of the mannequin. So I am just going to, you don't have to be neat or straight for this. Just do a simple, like I've done, little running stitch there. And then what I want to do is just do some pleating in it. And that is going to be pleated around here. Let's see, pull that a bit tighter. Now, these end bits, I want to tuck around. So where my knot is, my knot's here, I want to try and put that round there. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue under here now to hold this down. Come on, fabric attack. It's all quite fiddly this is, but uh, yeah. Let's take our time and we'll do it in stages. Okay, so I'm just going to hold that there for a moment. Now, the same with the other side, that's going to wrap around. But what we need to do is make sure we have gathered it up as much. I'm just going to put a peg on my little, cool little pegs to hold that there, like so. Okay, now let's do a bit more gathering. on here like that I think is how I want it it's ever so slightly manipulating it and then that is going to tuck around that side as well okay so I've still got my thread in at the moment because I don't want to knot it off. I want to use it to then stitch down this. Um, I just want to um, manipulate that how I want that. I think that looks nice. And now I'm just going to put um, some glue under here. And let's grab another one of my little little pegs. and just hold this down like so and as you can see we've got those pleats um, and then what I'm going to do once it's dry I'm going to come up and stitch up there so let's just have a look I can't I can't wait till it's completely finished I want to put it on and see what it's going to be look like okay so we've got something similar to this I probably won't use this green material but then that is just going to sit raised up oh look at that Oh, that's lovely. So we might do something with the bottom um, on it. I'm not sure yet. I might um, chop it a little shorter um, or I might just put a little bit of material down the end. I know I do want to think about perhaps something like this around the waist. Um, and I wasn't sure whether I wanted a band around the waist beforehand either, which is what that's for. Um, but uh, yeah. Okay. How are we doing? Is it... Uh, should be dry enough now. Fabric attack is pretty quick. So as I said, I've still got the thread in here. So I'm just going to come back up. Make sure I come through the mannequin. And I'm just going to turn it upside down like this because it's going to be easier for me to do it from my right side. And then I want to push down and sew down these pleats. And as I said, you won't see this. So if you're not the neatest of sewing, um, and you are following along don't worry about it because you can cover it all up with a little band of a, some trim and that's 
There's the last one in there. There. That's much flatter now. Oh, doesn't that look lovely? Okay, so again, I am just going to come through some of the material on the back. So that it's not going to come undone and just cut that okay now what i need to do is manipulate the fabric for the skirt to get it how we want it so I definitely think we want some glue down this side under here just on the edge and then that will hold um, this down so I'm just going to run a bit of glue under here and just bring that around like so and again let's use these little pegs we've got them here to hold that okay so I'm going to do exactly the same again this side so let's grab myself another bit and then a couple of little pegs There we go. Oh, it's looking lovely. Really looking lovely. So we want to create a little band in the middle. What do we want to go around the middle? No, don't like that. What about this? We could get a couple of those on there. That's actually quite nice. I quite like that. How does that look on there? Yeah, I think that looks quite nice. So I'm just wondering whether um, I want to put a band of this behind it. I think this might make it a bit quite thick if I do this first and then that. Yeah, no, that's fine. So I think I'm going to have this. So how many can we get on there? It looks like we're just going to get the two. So let's cut it. There we go. So I will sew again on this, but I'm just going to glue it to start with. So let's just put a bit of glue along that bit. And we want to that on there like so oh that looks nice that really does look nice actually I don't know whether it needs to be sewn because you won't see that way you won't see the stitching okay let's take our little pegs off and then the skirt should yes it does it puffs up that's good that's good so that's going to go on there. I'm just wondering about do I want any of this on the hem of the skirt? Do we want any of that? No, I don't think we do. And Let's have a look. Can you see that? Just wondering. Just wondering on the length now. I'm thinking as to what we could do. I think I like that. Like it as that length, actually. So 
So that's our little mannequin. Did we want anything across the top? Actually, that's not too bad across there, is that? Okay, I'm just going to... Do we want that on there? Yeah, I think I do. And I'm going to tuck it around. So I'm just going to cut it here. And I am just going to put some glue on here. that round and that round yeah that's nice that is get more glue under here Yum. there so that is our little mannequin so lovely so well, how do we do for time 21 minutes so yeah I'm going to just back that onto here so that it's like that hides it all in between there um, I want to come on to do some other ideas um, and I know my video net is already going to be quite long so this was another idea that I had um, stitching so we've done this first idea, stitching on here. Second idea, using fabric, stitching it um, and creating the little mannequin that we're going to put on there. Now, my other idea, let's just move these to the side, um, is I wanted to do think of stitching and how I use stitching and how it inspires me within a journal. Obviously, the very basic is stitching around a page, um, which you've all seen um, on my channel here. I do quite a lot. I do like stitching on my pages and it's probably something you guys have done. I mean, I've just done zigzag. I've done straight stitch. If you've got if you're a quilter and you've got an embroidery machine that's got all the different embroidery settings, um, then obviously you can do all sorts of lovely pattern stitches. Um, so that's just a reminder that you know that that's always a good way to um, add a bit of interest and inspiration to your journal this is one that I wanted to um, have a go at and I'm just oh I'll have to come to that one in a little bit my uh, strings are all downstairs my embroidery threads are downstairs so this is an idea that I had was to stitch this through on the edge of a page I think it's been done before it's not new a new new idea it's new to me I've not done this before um, and I wanted to use some of these lovely washi strips that you get in Rachel's kit um, so I thought I would just show you how I made this one so I've got my page here and I'm going to be using it down at this side this time round um, and then that's going to go on that side. On that side, that. Yeah, it goes up that way. So, uh, first things first, I just want to do a little bit of inking on this edge along here. And I've been using vintage photo um, for the pages because I've put different people's kits together. Um, so, they're often some different colours. So, I'm just going to do. Just that little bit here, so it don't take me too long, you won't see me need to ink the whole thing. So just that bit there, the same on that side. Lovely. And then I do want to um, score this and then I'll give it an ink. So I'm just going to grab my scoreboard. You can fold it um, along this centre line. I, I just like it, it's easier for me to fold it if I do my scoring down here first, just like that, because this is printed on card, 
so it gives a good um, strength to the corner of the pocket. Okay. So I'm not bothered that it doesn't match at all. It's just that I want it to be folded um, on that line. Right, now we'll do the inking. And I'm just using some um, bought new thread from uh, Hobbycraft here. But you can do anything. You could feed lace through. You could feed um, torn strips of fabric if you wanted more of a um, sort of like a grungy feel. Um, you can do all sorts with it. So that's done already. So what I want to do is let's ink this um, ink, sorry, glue, grab a glue page. And I'm just using glue stick for this just to glue this put one down. I'm lined up. That's on there nicely. Okay, so that's that side. And then I'm just going to put a little bit more glue on here. Um, I printed when I printed these on card I printed them borderless so it's come up um, bigger than the um, page so I'll just need to trim trim this little section off there we go give that a re-ink there we go so now it's putting the holes in. With this one, I use my little punch. These are the um, size of the holes it gives you. Um, I don't know what they measure. Just, just over three quarters of one and three quarters centimeters. Not, um, it's not an exact measurement. They were a cheapy set, um, but I do like the size of this one. I use this hole punch quite a bit and because the ribbon is quite thick, I didn't want it to scrunch too much. If you're going for a thinner one, a thinner ribbon, um, then just match your hole to the thickness of your material. Um, so if you were doing like twine and string, you could get away with a little hole punch. Um, you um, use this. Um, providing it will go through the hole. Okay, just give that a few more moments to dry before we do that, but let's get our piece of ribbon cut ready. So time it goes in and gets woven. Uh, let's say about there. So yeah, this just adds, it's a nice weight to the page. So you could use this like I've done here. I'm going to use it as tab pages um, in my journal. Okay. So all I'm going to do is, actually I need to come do it. I need to press down quite hard on my, on this. So I apologize if it, it's quite thick. And then just punching the holes, it's going through quite a few thicknesses of um, 
Last, the, the other two in this set broke this bit. I think I was trying to go through too thick a material and it just broke. But this one's a stay, which is good. Okay, I'm going to do this one this way so that I can... I don't want to get it too... Oh, there we go. There. Well, I shall keep these. Um, they would be nice, inked up um, with a little brad. They make little closures like so. Now, I didn't on this one, but I'm just going to um, give the holes a little bit of an ink. I just think... So this is the holes that you would make with you had your needle. So it's a bit of a play on um, the twisty ones. So I want to make sure I've got that at the top. So I'm doing it this way first so that I can have that. Let me come down and just feed it through. Oops, go on, down you go. Okay, so we're going to come like so on this one. That's absolutely fine. Slightly different. I mean, this one had a couple of less holes. I spaced them out a little bit um, bigger space. Um, these are spaced together a bit closer together. Um, but all I do now is just put... See how... Oh, that's it. I'm just going to put a bit of glue. Um, actually, first, I think while I've got it, I'm going to just cut myself a banner shape at the top. There we go. And then a bit of glue on here to hold it down at the top. That way it won't come out. So just a bit of glue there. There we go. And even from that side, it looks really, really nice. So we don't need this one as long, do we? We that there. And let's do the same. I can do it from this way. As long as I remember to do the point from the outside corners in. Like so. And then we want a bit of glue along this bit here. Like so. And that is another one done. Another page. How lovely is that? So simple and so quick. You can do that on any page and if your pages are strong enough you don't have to do this extra banner bit I just wanted to add a little bit of decoration by having that on there um, and punching the holes you could go straight through your page if you didn't want to do that step but I just think it adds adds a little extra to the page so there we go now I think looking at the time yes my video is going to be just over an hour so I haven't quite got to my other ideas but I will do um, a little bonus video um, once the collaboration is finished because you, you've got um, from the 1st to the 15th you've got wonderful collaborators um, taking inspiration from their prompt and showing you lots of things so do go check everybody's video out um, and then I will carry on with this after the collaboration is finished and we can just do a few more ideas so if you want to see the rest of those do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for notifications. Um, I usually have videos, well I do have videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and then there's often some bonus videos in between. Um, but yeah, this has been such a fun collaboration. I hope you have been inspired to just use some stitches in some different ways within your journal. Um, on your pages or use things like this to create focal points. Um, 
on the page. I think that's um, really, really fun to just sort of think outside the box and just think, you know, what, what could you do um, with stitching within your journal? So thank you very much for watching. Take care, everyone. Happy crafting. Bye.